All right, so starting out with, um, this was section 1.6, I believe, a tour of the universe. Um, I'm gonna give you a tour of the universe in my favorite way. Um, and just to give you a little bit of context, this is a figure from your astronomy book about the orbits in the solar system. So um, all of the orbits of the planets are shown here in blue. Um, I've highlighted Earth here in the solid yellow. And then those red objects are uh, dwarf planets. So as you can see, there's a little bit of variation between the dwarf planets compared to the other planets. We'll talk about why that is later in the term. Um, but just to give you a sense of scale, um, the Earth orbits at a distance of one astronomical unit. I'll talk about what that is in a second. And Neptune is out at 30. So this is, if you want like a numeric bound on the edge of the planetary system, then that would be about 30 AU. The rest, of, like I said, there's stuff out beyond Neptune. So the solar system itself has a boundary that's much farther away than 30 AU. So that unit is called the astronomical unit. Um, this is a really useful distance scale we'll use inside our solar system. Um, you're probably not familiar with it because it's not very useful here on Earth, of course. Um, it is defined as the approximate, you know, the average distance between the Earth and the Sun. The Earth varies in distance uh, from the Sun at different parts of its orbit, which we'll talk about next time. Um, but on average, it's 1.496 times 10 to the 11th power meters from the Sun at any given time. If I wanted to write this number, which is written in scientific notation out in standard form, then I would need to add 11 factors of 10 to this prefix 1.496. So that's what I've done here. Um, if I moved my decimal point over by three, then that takes care of three of those factors of 10. So I'd have eight left, therefore there's eight zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, so um, scientific notation is something that we will be using in our class. I'm not gonna go over it now because we're not gonna use it today. Uh, maybe at the end of class, if we have time, we can chat about it though. All right, so the astronomical unit, the distance between Earth and Sun. Um, so I wanna give you a feeling for how big the universe is because just saying, you know, the Earth is at one AU and Neptune is at 30 AU mm, still might not be super satisfying. So let's say that the Sun is grapefruit. I don't have a grapefruit with me today, otherwise I would hold it in front of the camera, but no grapefruit. Anyway, if the sun is a grapefruit, then at that same uh, scale, Earth would be the tip of a ballpoint pen. So just, you know, the little round ball in the tip of a ballpoint pen, 7.7 um, .7 millimeters in diameter compared to a typical grapefruit around eight and a half, nine centimeters in diameter. Um, on this scale, Jupiter would be like one piece of Skittles candy. And um, to talk about Earth orbit, if we put the sun at the end zone of an American football field, then Earth would orbit at the 10 yard line from our grapefruit sun. So again, ballpoint pen tip Earth is 10 yards away from our grapefruit sun. If we wanna put the Neptune orbit into perspective here, we'd have to stitch together three football fields, not including the end zones, in order to find Neptune. So that's about the scale of our planetary system. Uh, Neptune is smaller than Jupiter, not by a ton, but by some. So it's smaller than a Skittles candy. So, um, you know, hopefully you appreciate the sun is a very large object compared to the planets, right? Um, and so most of the mass of our entire solar system is within the sun. Um, and the rest of the planets are um, kind of just specks. Uh, rocky and gassy specks. If you wanted to get to the nearest star on this scale, then our nearest star, Alpha Centauri, would be located in about Washington, D.C. if we put the sun in, say, San Francisco. So um, the solar system is fairly small compared to the distance between stars. We're very far from our nearest star. And now here's the new unit. Um, if you wanted to get to Alpha Centauri, it's 4.36 light years away. Uh, the light year is kind of a funny unit. That's the distance that light travels in one year. So it's kind of, if in my last slide, I had my Google Maps directions marked in terms of time, as if I'm going to walk the whole country to get to the next star, right? And so I could express my trip in hours, right? I could say 
um, Washington DC is 925 hours at walking pace from San Francisco, right? Even though 925 hours is not a distance. Instead, the distance is 28, 25 miles. But we often express our you know, distances in units of time when we're talking about driving, for example, right? And the light year is kind of the same. It's just saying that if I am going at the speed of light, oops, there we go. If I'm going at the speed of light, then the light year is how far you can travel in one year at that speed. All right, so the light year is 9.46 times 10 to the 15 meters. Um, so it's larger than the AU. Um, and if you're curious about the speed of light, it is one fixed value. It's about three times 10 to the eight meters per second, um, or a lot of miles per hour. That is the light year. That's more useful for measuring the distance to stars. Um, the topic of stars is uh, 122 stellar astronomy next term. So we deal a lot more with the light year in that class than in this class, but I still want you to be familiar with it because you've probably heard it a bunch of times in popular media. All right, so we can measure the units of, or the distances of things with either the AU or the light year. Oops. And so just to kind of quantify the scale of different things, um, uh, I wanna point out that our sun is marked by this little yellow star here. It's just one star out of billions in the Milky Way galaxy. So of course, this is not a picture of the Milky Way galaxy, we're in it, so we can't really take um, a picture of it in this format. We can take pictures of it, but it doesn't look like this in our sky. We'll talk about what it does look like. Um, but if you're curious, the sun is um, three times 10 to the four light years from galactic center. Um, we're in an arm called the um, Orion Spur, and the entire galaxy itself is about 10 to the five light years in diameter. So it is a truly massive place. Um, and of course, our galaxy is just one of many, many galaxies in the universe. So us here on Earth, around our you know, average star in our Milky Way galaxy, we're just a very, very small part of the universe. I think this is one of the most beautiful things about astronomy is that it reminds us how small we are. It makes us no less important than anything else though. All right, so that's all I have to say about scale. And that's my very brief um, tour of the universe.